Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, the 29th of April. God, we're almost through with April. Um, just got in from taking the boys for a nice long walk. It's kind of cool out today, so it was really nice to, to be out and about. <clears throat> and they just had their breakfast, and in half hour, we've got a band Zoom meeting with management about upcoming things for the immediate family. So I wanted to uh, slip in some music uh, before doing that, and I just finished another cameo. Uh, this one was great. It was for people that have basset hounds, which is really great. Um, I was thinking, somebody mentioned something about this in one of the um, uh, uh, responses to the last video, and I looked it up, and, and lo and behold, uh, they were right. Um, I had forgotten about this one, too. Um, I'm going to read a little little bit here, and then I'll tell you about the uh, the artist, but uh, on this project. But um, this one is is kind of really worth if you really feel like it, going into Wikipedia and look him up and read it because it's a uh, it's an extensive history for somebody who did not live very long, um, and his name is Ingram Cecil Connor the Third, better known as Graham Parsons. Um, so I'm going to read this little bit here, and then I'll tell you about this and play this track. Um, he was born November 5th, 1946, and died September 19th, 1973. Professionally known as Graham Parsons, was an American singer, songwriter, guitarist, and pianist. Parsons also recorded as a solo artist with the International Submarine Band, The Birds, and The Flying Burrito Brothers. He popularized what is called... Cosmic American Music, a hybrid of country, rhythm and blues, soul, folk, and rock. Parsons was born in Winter Haven, Florida, and developed an interest in country music while attending Harvard University. He founded the International Submarine Band in 1966, but the group disbanded prior to the 1968 release of their debut album, Safe at Home. Parsons joined the Birds in early 1968 and played a pivotal role in making of the seminal Sweetheart of the Rodeo album. After leaving the group in late 1968, Parsons and fellow bird Chris Hillman formed the Flying Burrito Brothers in 1969. Uh, the band released its debut, The Gilded Palace of Sin, the same year. The album was real, well received but failed commercially. After a sloppy cross-country tour, the band hastily recorded Burrito Deluxe. Parsons was fired from the band before the album's release in early 1970. Emmy Lou Harris assisted him on vocals on his first solo album, GP, released in 73. Although it received enthusiastic reviews, the release failed to chart. His next album, Grievous Angel, peaked at number 195 on the Billboard chart. His health deteriorated over several years of drug abuse, culminating in his death from a toxic combination of morphine and alcohol in 1973 at the age of 26. Um, Parsons' relatively short career was described in all music as enormously influential in country and rock, blending the two genres to the point that they became indistinguishable from each other. He has been credited with helping to found the country rock and, and alt-country genres. His posthumous honors include the American Music Association President's Award in 2003 as a ranking at number 87 on Rolling Stone's list of 100 greatest artists of all time. Um, he was a remarkable cat, but when you read the whole thing and his death and what went on, uh, it's an unbelievable um, story to uh, to check out, and, and I highly recommend it. He's one of those people that's uh, well worth uh, digging into like this. Um, they did a tribute album uh, to, to Graham, and it was called Return of the Grievous Angel, a tribute to Graham Parsons. And... Um, I forget when we when we did this one, um, but um, the song we did uh, uh, that I was involved with on this tribute uh, was written by Graham Parsons and Chris Hillman, and it's called High Fashion Queen, and um, it's a duet with Steve Earle and Chris Hillman on this, and the band is myself and uh, Willie Ornalis on drums, John Jorgensen on guitar, J.D. Manis on steel, and Skip Edwards on piano. It was engineered by uh, Bernard Matthews, and he mixed it, and it was produced by Herb Peterson. So I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to play this. So this is Chris Hillman and Steve Earle, High Fashion Queen, from the tribute album, The Return of the Grievous Angel. Here we go. 
turn the speaker on. There's a place every one of us can go to. Maybe you have been there once or twice. Where all your friends just look at you and whisper. And they want to give you nothing but advice. see where Dwight Yoakam came from and artists like that that also that kind of Bakersfield sound I love that kind of stuff but um, and it's been fun over the years um, doing a, a lot of work with Herb Peterson and Chris Hillman on their projects and they had the Desert Rose Band which was really a wonderful band um, so there's this whole kind of mixed year in here but Graham uh, was a really I mean, coming out of L.A. here, I mean, his name, everybody knew him, and his influence was really deep uh, on the music scene here, that West Coast um, country pop rock uh, scene. It was just so tragic that he, that he died so young, because there could have been... And the, you start to think about the guys that die, you know, in their 20s, like the Tommy Bolins and Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplins and all of them, and you think, God, you know, either they were a Roman candle that burned incredibly bright and then went out, or we just lost a whole lot of years of um, creativity that would have been something else to behold as uh, as their lives continued. But uh, um, but he's still so highly respected in, in the music business. You mention his name to pretty much anybody, um, people like Keith Richards, and they go, oh, yeah, Graham Parsons. You know, I mean, it's it's like it's it's pretty deep. So, uh, so again, that album is called "The Return of the Grievous Angel," and it's a tribute to Graham Parsons. So, but I would, man, I would look up, uh, I'd pull up Wikipedia and look up Graham Parsons in there because it's a in, really interesting read to see what this guy's life was all about. 
and all the things he went through in such a short number of years was pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but I'm going to get going and get this uploaded here and um, uh, get ready for our band Zoom. Um, you, know, you know, I'll be glad when I can just end videos at this point and just wish everybody a great day. But, you know, it's up this early this morning and, and just seeing the... Uh, the nightmares that continue on this in this world, uh, especially uh, in the Ukraine, uh, just to see what's going on. These people that are in that steel mill that just want to get out, but you know, every time they, they make an attempt to to get out of there, they get bombed. It's, just, it's unbelievable, and still the fact that there's talk of nuclear weapons. You know, you just go, the, the, the madness is so deep and so intense at this point. Um, and, you know, there's, you know, all this stuff going on now with um, getting um, shots into um, children, which is, is, it's really, to me, it's, it's one of these things that really it, it's necessary if we're going to uh, protect them. And, you know, and I don't know, everybody talks about, oh, the, these shots. I mean, I remember as a little kid getting so many shots during the course of my life, and I've lived a really healthy life without it, the diseases that we were um, given shots to protect us from, from polio to diphtheria to whooping cough to you name it. I mean, there's been just so many over the years, and I'm, I, having been a science major, uh, co-major in school, I, I really firmly believe in science. And, uh, and, and for the most part, I trust that what is coming out of, of the scientific community to make us a safer society. Um, so, um, you know, but there's these people working every day, you know, weekends upon us, but they're still working in the hospitals and all the different jobs that put them in with the public having to deal with all of this stuff. And, uh, and my heart goes out to them at some point. I'm sure they're going to be quite relieved when this will become more of a standard flu situation, you know, and you'll get the occasional case coming in, but not the catastrophic cases like they've had to deal with for the past couple of years. So I'm going to get going. My, my thoughts are with Graham Parsons' family and, and all the people that he touched because uh, quite a remarkable cat. So um, I'm out of here. I will be back tomorrow. Okie dokie. And uh, I think next Wednesday is our clubhouse. Um, this, I think, let me pull up my calendar here and double check this. Hold on one sec, where are we here? Yeah, the fourth uh, is the clubhouse. Um, things are piling in here. The, on the Friday, we start Brett McKenzie's album from Flight of the Concords from New Zealand. He'll be back in Los Angeles and we will be in for a nice solid week of, of cutting a new album with him. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, so take good care, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.